to the channel everybody all right so we're going to be covering holly sniper efi installation slash troubleshooting issues efi can be a monumental pain in the butt to insulate install if you have never done it before so there's a lot of little things that we're going to need to cover today to help you make that installation easier or if you've already installed it and having problems with it how to diagnose them to make it run better because anybody who's ever dealt with efi understands to diagnose efi can be a monumental pain in the, as you know, EFI takes electricity, meaning your electrical connections are important. Now we all already know that. Biggest thing people do is they don't follow the instructions correctly. You need to hook up your EFI directly to your battery. Big question is why? The reason for that is if you hook up your, your main power and ground for your EFI to any, anywhere else in your car, if there is a voltage drop somewhere, because your fan kicks on and the voltage drops on a little bit, your computer is going to go stupid. And when it goes stupid, it goes automatically into fail safe. When you go into fail safe, if it controls your timing, it's going to pull all your timing out. It's going to dump a ton of fuel in there and just run terrible. You don't want to do that. You need consistent power. Your battery acts as a big buffer in between your electrical systems. That way there's constant power for your EFI computer at all times. Now, if the fan kicks on or an extra fuel pump kicks on because you have dual fuel pumps or something, roll your windows down, that voltage drop that you'll see across different circuits in the car will stay constant on the battery itself, giving you more consistent drivability that way. Something a little less well known is where you run your cables. Now, look, I get it. You know not to run them close to things like your headers or even your spark plug cables or ignition coils. But there are other things that give off noise for electronics. Something too close to alternators, old alternator wiring, like say on the Camaro here, alternator wiring can be pretty old, cause a lot of noise. I have run my main power connections right directly to my battery. But as you can see back here, these are all the wires with all my signal wires. This just gives me all my information for my the computer to read. Now any little voltage spike or change in any of that is going to cause problems. And it's been one little voltage spike or a little bit of noise interrupting the signal in between the sensor and the computer and that's a problem. If it senses any sensor that goes even for a split second a little screwy, it's going to go into fail safe. Again, don't want that. That's bad. It runs, starts dumping fuel like crazy, runs terrible. But something you might not think about is this 6AL control box I have on my Camaro. That can cause problems with it. I have no signal wires running with any of those bundles. Or something a little less commonly known will be something like your transmission control box. If you have a newer transmission, need a computer to run that, those running those cables all together can cause problems with each other and cause the car to run terrible. And that's something very difficult to diagnose because it happens for a split second and then you have no idea what's going on. So separate your cables the best you can. I know we don't want to have cables running all over our cars. That's why we drive old school cars. But hey, do what you got to do to make sure they run good. Next, another big issue we run into is placement of your engine coolant temp sensor. I see quite a few people do this and it's a very easy one to make a mistake with. And will it cause major issues? No, but it could be dumping too much fuel because it's, it's not reading the correct temperature for your coolant. Now, what I mean by that is on my Camaro, for example, I have two coolant temp sensors. This one in my crossover intake right here on the front of the engine, this is my Sniper EFI sensor. I have another sensor in the back of my engine, it's a little hard to see, it's going to be all the way back there, and that one controls my, it doesn't control anything actually, it just it runs to my gauge in the car. Now, if I look at the module on my computer for the Sniper EFI and my gauge, there's a 35 degree temperature difference between the two. Real question is why? The front sensor in the crossover tube has coolant flowing across it, which is gonna be the correct temperature that it wants to see. The back port, it just deadheads. The coolant flows up to it and just stops, which causes it to heat soak really badly, giving you that 35 degree temperature difference between the two. And what happens is it thinks the car is hotter than it really is, and it's gonna put more fuel into it. So depending on what temperature your engine's at, depends on how much fuel the EFI is gonna to determine to dump into the engine at one time. So if the temperature's not reading most accurate for what the coolant temp is, because one is heat, the sensor is heat soaked, it's gonna dump more fuel in there 
trying to cool things down a little bit. Maybe it's thinking it's running too lean or whatever. You need to put it in something that flows across it. Now that can be on your engine, on the side of the engine, in the intake manifold. There's tons of different places that can go to do it. It's just a little thing that makes a big difference. And if you have it in the wrong port, people will go, oh, it's just glugging fuel. I never figure it out. It's a very hard thing to diagnose if you don't know about it. Our next tip that we have talked about is your exhaust. Now we're hot rodders. Everything we own is gonna have headers put on them. That's what we do, power, torque. So we need to change the exhaust for more free flow. What are headers known for? Leaking gaskets all the time. You have to fix those leaks on these cars. The problem is you now have a Note 2 sensor that is checking for how much air is in your exhaust. If there's too much air, it's gonna start putting more fuel into your engine. And if you have an exhaust leak, that means uh, when it's not leaking out, it's sucking air in. And with that extra air, it's gonna go, oh, it's running too lean, put more fuel in the engine, it becomes a vicious cycle, keep dumping more and more fuel, it runs terribly. To fix that, seal up the leaks. Anything before your O2 sensor, the air needs to be regulated through the throttle body. If it doesn't know what air is coming in and it senses too much air in the exhaust, it's just gonna keep dumping more and more fuel trying to rich it out to fix that issue. Meaning you're gonna have to figure out what's going on. Exhaust leaks are pretty easy to determine. Most people know if they have one, but if you don't fix that and you're just trying to treat it like a carburetor, you can't do that. You gotta fix it. Fix those leaks, get a sealed engine, it's gonna run a whole lot better. Something else that's really easy to overlook is where you hook up your 12 volt keyed ignition source. So the signal wire telling the computer, hey, we're starting the car right now, once it applies 12 volts to it. When you're looking for this, I know I've done it, what do you do? Turn the key on, test, test, test. This one has 12 volts, turn the key off, it went, went to zero, turn the key on, it goes to 12. Never try it cranking. You need to try it when it's cranking to see if the voltage drops at all. If the voltage drops at all, even a little bit, computer goes dumb and it doesn't want to start or it gives you problems starting if your battery is a little bit weak. So either making your own 12 volt dedicated circuit or testing when you crank it that the voltage stays constant in order for the car to start correctly and then trigger the cycle for it to start going into and running consistently. All right, I got one last tip for you guys that people ask about all the time. This can be your dual plane intake manifold. This is a common one I hear. The sniper doesn't work on dual plane intake manifolds. My Camaro proves that wrong. I have, it's running on a Edelbrock RPM air gap dual plane intake manifold right now. Driven this car plenty since I installed it. It works perfectly. And the main reason for that is the old school dual plane ma intake manifolds used to run a divider wall in between to make it the dual planes. That's fine and it works great. Except with Sniper AFI, it doesn't work like a carburetor does. And people try to treat them like carburetors and you can't do that. On a carburetor, it dumps fuel through two barrels at a time. So on the both planes on the intake manifold and when you give more throttle, it dumps on the other two. If I doesn't do that for this, Sniper shoots one injector at a time. Now, it doesn't shoot in a specific order. It just does randomly. Whichever injector is available to fire again in that interval is what it's going to fire with. So it can shoot the two injectors on the driver's side two, three, four times in a row and never fire anything on the other side of the intake manifold. And the problems that run into this is on, say, my Camaro here, I have an O2 sensor on the passenger side of the engine. So it's gonna think, oh, I'm running too lean and dump more fuel and keep going like that. There's a simple way to fix this. You got two options. Option one, you can take a Dremel and Dremel this wall down about an inch in about for about the width of the whole thing. You do that, that allows it to balance and suck the fuel where it needs to go. Or even cheaper and easier, buy a one inch spacer, put it in between your intake manifold and your sniper, problem solved. Depends on your application if you have the room for that. I hope all these tips help you out. Even if you don't have a sniper, say you have a Pro-Am or you have an MSD or Edelbrock kit, they all work very similarly. And a lot of these details apply to those as well. If I helped you to solve a problem that you've been dealing with for a while, put in the comments below. I want to see it. I, I, I really hope that 
I'm helping you solve a problem. Or if you're gonna be buying one of these kits, these little things are gonna make your life so much easier. You can put it on and done. I installed everything on this Camaro. Haven't had a problem other than one battery issue, which I knew how to deal with because I had the knowledge to diagnose it immediately. I didn't have to struggle with it. The more you struggle with the project, the more you, interest, you lose interest in it. And that's not good. I want you guys to finish your projects, to drive them, get them on the road. If this video is helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Go work on your cars. Peace.